This is The Tea Project with your host, Gadiel and Michelle, a husband and wife duo where they will be discussing personal finance, managing a household, and so much more. Gadiel is a father, husband, a military veteran, and a lawyer. Michelle is a mother, wife, boss. Each week, they will be providing you with fresh and valuable content, so stay tuned. And now, welcome to The Tea Project. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Money Talks on Tea Project. Hi everybody, hope you're doing safe and that you're safe and uh, healthy. Safe and sound. And healthy. So folks, today we're going to have a, we have a good episode. We're going to be talking about spending freezes. A lot of folks right now are forced to do a spending freeze, but for the few that are not forced because you're still you're essential, you're still working, um, we're going to break down what a spending freeze is and how you can apply it now in our current state of the economy. And when this whole thing blows over, how you can continue doing a spending freeze. Well said. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I got a compliment <laughs> from my wife. Uh, you know, that means something to me. Uh, I'm blushing right now, folks. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's, let's all right. Go. So a spending freeze is pretty much self-explanatory. It's just, you know, your 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 rate of spending goes down um or down to zero so you have um food shelter auto and utilities which are considered your needs Mm -hmm. and then as far as your wants are anything else discretionary um restaurants coffee shops personal uh care um shopping any of that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. so one area that you can hit home is food so but before i get onto that part i want to just let you know that in 2018 Mm -hmm. because i was curious to see what is the the most uh spent item on on a personal level you know what how much do we spend percentage wise for housing transportation and all that and food happens to be third in in that um in the pie in the pie with the now that is for after taxes though okay right so housing is 33 percent transportation interesting that you said okay interesting that you said that because folks need to know this about the taxes. Mm-hmm. But we'll, we'll briefly talk about that. But it's it's interesting that, that you pointed out. You want that to out. talk about that one? Yeah. Uh, look, the number one expense that you that we as taxpayers have is taxes. Michelle was telling you number three was housing. I'm sorry. No, uh, number number three is was food. food. Number three is food. Sorry. But number one was taxes. Like we pay more out of everything that we pay. Food, insurance, health insurance, entertainment, all everything. Number one was taxes, folks. Right. We need to find ways and how to reduce our tax liability. Mm-hmm. But, but we'll talk about that on a different episode. All right. So, but but as far as after tax expenses, mm-hmm. uh, housing is number one. Transportation is number two, and food comes in at thirteen percent, which is uh, in third place. Right. So that's a very good place to start with when it comes to um, spending freezes. Yeah. So. If the, if there's anything that you do with a spending freeze, if, if it's just one thing that you can do is shelf cooking, especially in the situation that we're in right now where you have to practice social distancing, you're isolated at home. Um, we've seen a couple of pizza deliveries out in our I neighborhood. Look, and I look out the window, folks, and every five minutes I see a pizza delivery. Nothing which wrong with that. Which is good because then that means that at least that that um, sector of the, of the economy is still, you know, operating, uh, operating you know and, I mean? and people are employed and, and people are getting serviced. But right. still, if you can afford not spending money on ordering food and cooking at home, folks, that's what you got to do. So basically just going to your pantry, your refrigerator, and taking inventory of all the items that you have in there and pull out a, a, a notebook with or a calendar or something on there and, and start meal planning. Right. Um, if you don't even know where to start with as far as cooking, because maybe, say, like us, we hardly ever cook, mm-hmm. um, we just yep. pretty much put like two or three ingredients together, call it dinner and or call it lunch, and we're good to go. But we're forced now to do more more cooking now. Oh, us. yeah. And, and actually, we have not ate any restaurant or any outside of the home food. Yeah, for quite some time. For yeah, ever since At least we went little, into isolation. Yeah, so so folks, do that. Take advantage. And real quick, I know we're getting off topic a little bit, but take advantage of all the things that you haven't done because of work and life and everything that goes you know goes on in your life. Take advantage that you have the time. You're forced to have the time to really invest in your personal development, cooking, cleaning, 
uh, spending time with your kids, teaching your kids things that uh, otherwise they would learn at school. We're kind of doing that all now, and, and we appreciate it, to, to be honest. Well, the funny thing, um, another side track, is we caught um, our guys or little guys yeah. doing their own podcast. Yeah, so on, our, uh, yeah, that is pretty cool. So our kids have their own little tablets. They're the kids' Amazon Safe tablets. They're not just like any tablet where they only watch uh, you know, kids' apps and things like that. And trust me, we watch every little thing. We track the time. They have to read books before they can play games, etc. But since they watch us do podcasts and videos and we're vlogging and doing things like that, they're setting up their little like office space and they're doing their own vlogs. And it's hilarious. They talk about money and saving and not spending and, and things like that because they hear us all day, every day talking about these, these uh, subject matters. And here they are kind of replicating that. So these are things that you can implement in your household and they can benefit that uh, from that as well. The and and to add to that, um, we, we every time we always talk about this that the that when you go to school nowadays, or at least when we were going to school, they don't teach you personal finance. No, no, and it's not on the list. It, I think it it should come from the school system, but if not, at the very minimum, it should come from the house mm-hmm. household. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so it's good that that um, that they're getting that it, they're yeah. getting it. Even if, um, and we're not really even pushing it on them. They just, they're listening to what we're saying and they're absorbing it. Right. So, all right. So back to this. So as far as, um, if you're, if you're wondering, you know, how, how do I even implement this? Right. You know, so I think it's, it requires for you to write it down and break it down by, you know, do I want to do this over a weekend? Do Mm -hmm. I want to do a spending freeze over a week or over a month? Or do I want to do something like every other weekend I do a spending freeze? Right. You can be as you know creative as you want, um, or as you can be, and you know just just work with what you have, mm-hmm. and just be very aware of where your dollars are going. Right. Specifically because in 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 your mind you need to ingrain that you are on a quote unquote spending freeze. Right. And then you need to make sure that you track and that's very important because that's how you're gonna know your progress and that's how you're going to be accountable to yourself. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of the one of the things that you should do is communicate this to your family members to your friends, whoever it is that you're closest with right. so that they can under, they could understand where you're coming from. Also, on top of that, look, if a lot of your spending is, is like Michelle said, in 2018, the majority of uh, spending went into, into food, mm-hmm. a lot of it restaurants, out eating out, not at home for any reason. You don't know how to cook. You don't cook, whatever. You want to go out because it's recreational. It's fun. Look, um, those are dollars that you're spending where there's no return. You're mm-hmm. not getting thing, nothing back from that. So it's not an investment. It's just money spent. So instead of spending money in these areas, freeze it. And it's and, healthier and, to eat at and, home. And re, It's healthier to eat at home. But re-lo- al- reallocate that spending in other areas where you can actually make something back from that. Sorry. Another thing you can consider is mm-hmm. if you have, and you don't have, you don't need a backyard for this, but you can also do homegrown um, mm-hmm. vegetables. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, tons of resources on on Google and and on Pinterest. So you, it's just a matter of being creative. You gotta and, do and it. And then every day, just reminding yourself, okay, I shouldn't spend on this. It's not a need. It's not. Um, it's not anything that I that I can. You know, that I can live without. Right. Another thing is memberships. If you're paying, say, gym membership, you're paying uh, a a stream channel membership or any type of membership right now is the perfect time to freeze them all, cancel them, and and reevaluate that later down the road. Do I really need this? Um, You know, maybe you got a gym membership. If you're not going to the gym, maybe you have space at home in the garage where you can create your own uh, gym. So that's one area, uh, memberships, freeze them, cancel them, see how you can do the same membership at no cost to you. Leave your credit cards at home as well. Very important. Mm-hmm. Um, right. If you can't, if you don't have it on you, can't use it. folks. Obviously 
like I said, this this what we're telling you is not only just for during. Yeah, this ain't only for now, folks. You look, this is gonna blow over, folks. You really want to set up good habits for the future, okay? Not just now. Life has fro has frozen you from spending, but when when it's back to like how it used to be, you want to continue those continue habits. Continue the new habits that you're creating. Um, other than that, I, that's pretty much all that you. Yeah, the folks. I mean, we're really just really not much of uh, discretionary areas that they're ending. Like we said, there's food, there's shopping online. I mentioned the other day that mm -hmm. that one thing that people should do a practice is if they order Amazon and it's impulsive buying, they don't need it. Listen, put it in the cart. Walk away from it. Walk away. Turn the you know, don't purchase right then. Don't push the one button checkout. Come back the next day or later on, and then come and say, you know, do I really need this? Probably and if not. and if you do need it. Ask yourself, do you need it now? Right. So that it, and you can still leave it in your cart. Just don't press the purchase um, right. button because the, the key here is you want to decrease your spending, mm -hmm. like your the rate of your spending. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you find yourself that you're going out to eat or um, going out shopping or whatever every single day or once every week or twice every week, whatever it is, bring down that rate. Of, of the frequency mm -hmm. of your spending and you will notice you know through time how you can actually it, save that. and it starts by tracking you're not going to mm -hmm. know this how much you're really saving at the end of the week month or whatever if you don't track it you need to write these things down right one one last thing before do you have anything else um nope this is pretty much just do meal planning um oh another thing too is is you have gas in your car. You're in isolation right now. Mm -hmm. No need for you to go out and drive. If you need to get fresh air or whatever, you can always take a walk around your, your neighborhood or go outside to your patio, whatever that is. But save that, yeah, the, save gas the gas that you, that you have. Because, I mean, one you, you may, we, every time we may need it. We don't know how the future holds. I, I, I don't right. imagine a, there's going to be a shortage on oil and gas. But don't do it. That's really going back to bad habits. Look cut those habits take advantage of the situation we're currently in where you're forced you're forced life is forcing you to change your habits be mindful be mindful about these things and say you know what i'm gonna count better after this uh coronavirus have, have game nights um mm -hmm. and just just think what can i do that is that will not cost me money to occupy my time right right so one last thing folks listen we just did, recently did an episode Eight things you should do with your finances during an economic downturn like we're in now. Check out that uh, episode. A lot, a lot of information, valuable information that you can do right now in your life, in your personal finances. Take advantage, folks. So check out that episode. Follow us on YouTube, Money Talks on T Project. Follow us on Instagram, T Project Podcast. Check out our website productivebunch.com and listen in the comment section folks please write any questions what are you doing what if you've been doing uh, spending freezes and you have different ways of doing it let us know let the readers know and the listeners know that there's different ways of tackling it's always good to continue learning from other people's perspective so we can all grow together okay folks stay blessed and take care until next time <music>